Article 8, Rookie Scale. Section 1, Rookie Scale Contracts for First-Round Picks. Each rookie scale contract between a team and a first-round pick shall cover, cover a period of two seasons, but shall have an option in favor of the team for the player's third season and a second option in favor of the team for the fourth season. The option for the player's third season shall be exercisable during the last day following the last day of the first season through the immediately following October 31st. The option for the fourth season is going to be exercisable from the day following the last day of the second season through the following, immediately following October 31st. If October 31st falls on a Saturday, Sunday, or federal holiday, then the deadline would be the following business day. The rookie's salary scale applicable to a first-round pick is determined by the first season to be covered by the player's rookie scale contract. A first-round a first round pick's applicable rookie scale amount is determined by the player's selection number in the, in the NBA draft. Beginning on January 10, unsigned first-round pick's applicable rookie scale amount shall be reduced daily through the end of the regular season by the product of the applicable rookie scale amount multiplied by a fraction. The numerator is 1 and the denominator is the total number of days in that regular season. If one or more teams is required to forfeit one or more draft picks in the first round of a particular draft, then the rookie salary scale immediately following that draft will be adjusted by removing one or more rookie scale amounts from the middle of the rookie scale salary scale as follows. If one pick is forfeited, then the rookie scale amount for the 15th pick will be removed. If two are forfeited, then the 15th and the 16th will be removed. If three is forfeited, then the 14th, 15th, and the 16th will be removed. If it's greater than three, then the rookie scale amounts applicable to the players selected in that draft will be determined by their selection number under the rookie scalary scale and adjusted via the above. For example, if one first round pick were forfeited, the rookie scale amount would be unchanged for the f- for the first 14 picks. The remaining 15 picks would be the rookie scale amounts that would have been applicable to picks 16 through 30. A rookie scale contract will provide in each of the two seasons and the first option year at least 80% of the applicable rookie scale amount in current base comp and any components of the salary in excess of 80% is subject to individual negoci- negotiation, except that in no event may salary plus unlikely bonuses exceed 120% of the rookie scale amount, and uh, it may, the rookie scale contract may not provide for a signing bonus except for an international player payment in excess of the excluded international player payment amount or a loan. A rookie scale contract must provide protection for lack of skill and injury or illness in each of the first two seasons and the first option year um, of not less than 80% of the applicable rookie scale amount. Uh, And a team and a first round pick may negotiate additional conditions or limitations, except that uh, that protection for lack of skill cannot fall below uh, 80%. Uh, The second option year uh, will be unchanged from that of the first option year, except that the salary, excluding incentive compensation, likely bonuses, unlikely bonuses for that second option year will be increased over the salary, excluding incentive comp for the first option year by the applicable percentage specified in in the rookie salary scale. If a trade of a rookie scale contract would, by reason of a trade bonus, cause the salary plus unlikely bonuses to exceed 120% of the rookie scale amount, uh, then that trade bonus will be deemed amended to reduce the player's salary to 120% of the rookie scale amount. Section 2, Rookie Contracts for Later Signed First Round Picks. A first round pick who does not sign with the team that holds his rights for any portion of the three seasons following the NBA draft 
and who didn't play intercollegiate basketball during that period may enter into either a rookie scale contract uh, via what we just said, um, or if the team has room in excess of the first year rookie scale amount, then a contract covering no fewer than three seasons that provides for base compensation in the first season greater than um, 120% of the applicable first year rookie scale amount. Section three, loss of draft rights. If for any reason a team fails to make a required tender to a first round pick, withdraws a, fir- withdraws a required tender, or renounces a first round pick, or if a first round pick in a subsequent draft doesn't sign a contract for a period of one year following that, that subsequent draft, then the rules uh, in sections one and two will not apply and the first round pick will become a rookie free agent. In addition, the team should be prohibited from signing that player until he has signed a player contract with another NBA team and either completes the playing services called for under that contract or the contract's terminated via the waiver procedure. Section 4, 2018 to 2019 and 2019 to 2020 rookie salary scales. The rookie salary, uh, the rookie scale amount uh, for those years will be calculated via... For the purposes of this section, the quote baseline rookie scale is exhibit B2. And for 18, 19, and 19, 20 will be calculated by taking the baseline rookie scale for the prior cap year and adjusting the rookie scale amounts by applying the percent increase or decrease in the cap year from the preceding cap year to the current cap year. Provided, however, that the app that the applicable fourth year option and qualifying offer percentages will not change. The rookie salary scale for 18, 19, and 19, 20 uh, shall be calculated by taking the baseline rookie scale for that cap year and increasing the rookie scale amounts um, in respect of 18, 19 cap year by 30% and uh, the amounts, the rookie scale amounts in respect of 19, 20 cap year and the subsequent cap years by 45%. Now, for clarity, the foregoing 45% increase in those amounts for 1920 uh, would be applied in both the 1819 and 1920 rookie salary scales. 2018, 19, and 2019, 2020 rookie salary scales, assuming 5% annual growth in the cap, is Exhibit B3. Section 5. Existing rookie scale contract increases. Rookie scale contracts in effect as of the effective date of this agreement that were entered into prior to the agreement and is not terminated on or before June 30th, 2017 and has a term including the 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, 19 and or 19, 20 seasons shall be deemed amended on July 1, 2017 as follows. The remaining base comp, incentive comp, and base comp protection will be increased 15% for 1718, 30% for 1819, 45% for 1920. And these are collectively the quote rookie scale conforming increases. Rookie scale conforming, conforming increases shall be paid by the player's team, then reimbursed to the team out of the league wide fund. Now, rookie scale conforming increases will be excluded from the calculation of an individual player's salary and each team's team salary, and thus will have no effect on the amount of room, if applicable, a team has below the cap or the amount of a traded player exception, etc. Any contract before applying the rookie scale conforming increases that provides for base comp in respect of the 17-18 season or any future season, that is less than the minimum player's salary uh, for the cap year encompassing the applicable season via the 17-18 minimum annual salary scale, uh, any contract, the player will receive the applicable rookie scale conforming increase and, if necessary, any additional base comp that is required. Also, his salary is deemed equal to the minimum player's salary, 
and the amount that is the difference between his salary under the rookie scale contract prior to the conforming increases and his applicable minimum player salary will be paid directly by his team and not reimbursed out of the fund. Article 9, Length of Player Contracts. Section 1, Maximum Term. A player contract may cover in the aggregate up to but no more than four seasons from the date it's signed, provided, however, that with a qualifying vet free agent and his prior team can cover no more than five seasons, an extension of a rookie scale contract, other than a designated player rookie scale extension, no more than five seasons, an extension of a vet player other than a designated vet player extension, no more than five seasons, a designated player rookie scale extension must cover six seasons from the date it's signed, and a designated vet player extension must cover six seasons from the date it was signed. The max contract and extension lengths that were just described are inclusive of any option year. Section 2, Computation of Time. If a player contract or extension is signed after the beginning of a season, the season in which it was signed will be counted as one full season. And in the case of an extension that is signed at the end of the season through the immediately following June 30th, i.e. the just completed season, will be counted as one full season covered by the extension. Article 10, Player Eligibility and NBA Draft. Section 1, Player Eligibility. No player can sign a contract or play in the league unless he's been eligible for at least one NBA draft. And no player can be eligible for more than two NBA drafts. A player should be eligible when he's satisfied all of the requirements in Section 1BI and one of the requirements of Section 1BII. Now, Section 1BI says that the player needs to be 19 years old during the calendar year in which the draft is held and with respect to a player who is not an international player, at least one uh, NBA season has elapsed since the player's graduation from high school. And if he hasn't graduated high school, then since the graduating class where he would have graduated has graduated high school. All right, so he needs to have both of those under his belt. He needs to have at least one of these that are to come in Section 1BII. The player needs to have graduated from a four-year college in the USA and has no eligibility remaining, or he's attending or previously attended a four-year college in the USA, and his original class in that university has graduated or is going to graduate in the calendar year in which the draft is held and he has no eligibility, or he's graduated from high school in the United States and did not roll into college in the United States, um, and four calendar years have elapsed since his high school graduation, or he did not graduate from high school and four calendar years have elapsed since the graduation, the graduating class that he would have graduated in has graduated. Or he has signed a contract with a professional basketball team, not in the NBA, and has rendered services prior to the January 1 immediately preceding the draft. Or the player has expressed his desire to be selected in the draft in writing and it was received by the NBA at least 60 days prior to that draft, and that's, quote, an early entry player. Or, if the player is an international player, then the player is or will be 22 during the year of the draft, or he has signed a player contract with the professional basketball team not in the NBA that is located in the USA and has rendered services under the contract prior to the draft, or... He has uh, satisfied that, quote, early entry player um, criteria, which means he, in writing, sent to the NBA his desire to be in that draft 60 days prior to it. Now, for the purposes of a, quote, international player, that is defined as a player who has maintained a permanent residence outside of the USA for at least the three years prior to the draft while participating in basketball as an amateur or as a professional outside the United States, and who has previously enrolled in a college in the USA, and who is 
not who did not complete high school in the USA. For the purposes of a quote professional basketball team not in the NBA, this means any team that pays money or compensation of any kind in excess of a stipend for living expenses to a basketball player for rendering services for that team. Section 2. Term and timing of draft provisions. Each draft will be held prior to the July 10, preceding the commencement of the NBA season on a date to be designated by the commissioner. Section 3. Number of choices. The NBA draft will consist of two rounds, which are the same number of selections as there will be teams. Each team should be required to exercise any and all draft selections during each round of the draft. If any team is required to forfeit one or more draft picks, the number of players selected in the applicable round of the draft will be reduced by the number of such forfeitures. For example, if Team A is required to forfeit the ninth, the ninth pick in the, in the first round, at the time when there are 30 NBA teams, there will only be 29 players selected in the first round. Section 4, Negotiating Rights to Draft Rookies. A team that drafts a player from the date of that draft, quote, the initial draft, to the date of the next draft, quote, the subsequent draft, will be the only team that that player can negotiate and sign a player contract with, provided that on or before the July 15th, immediately following the initial draft for a first-round pick, or in the two weeks before September 5, immediately following the initial draft for a second-round pick, the team has made a required tender. If, if the team has made that required tender and the player has not signed a player contract between the initial draft and the subsequent draft, the team that drafted the player will lose its exclusive right to negotiate with the player and the player will be eligible for selection in the subsequent draft. A team that in the subsequent draft drafts a player who was drafted in the initial draft, received a required tender from the team that drafted him, and did not sign the player contract with the first team, will be the only team with uh, such player that may negotiate or sign a player contract, provided that the team has made a required tender. And then if the player has not signed a contract within the period between the subsequent draft and the next NBA draft, then the team will lose their exclusive right in, uh, that, he, that they had in the subsequent draft, and the player will become a rookie-free agent. If a player is drafted in an initial draft, receives that tender, doesn't sign it, and isn't drafted by a team in the subsequent draft, then the player will become a rookie-free agent immediately upon the conclusion of the subsequent draft. If a second-round pick receives a required tender and is waived subsequently, then the team will have exclusive rights to negotiate with and sign or convert the player to a two-way. If a team does not make a required tender, the player will become a rookie free agent on the July 16 for first round picks and the September 6 for second round picks following the draft. Meaning if the team, um, if a player drafted was drafted in, in either the initial or subsequent draft and that required tender um, was not made. A team may have may at any time withdraw a required tender provided that the player agrees in writing and the player will become a free agent after that happens. A team that holds the exclusive rights may at any time renounce those rights, except that if the team has made a required tender and uh, a renunciation shall not be permitted during the time the player has to accept the required tender. Section 5. Effective Contracts with Other Professional Teams If a player is drafted by a team in either the initial or subsequent draft, and during a period in which he can negotiate and sign a contract with only the team that drafted him, either is a party to a previously existing contract with a professional team not in the NBA that covers all or any part of the NBA season immediately following one of those drafts or signs, signs the player contract, this is, quote, a non-NBA signing, then the following rules will apply. The team that drafts the player shall retain the exclusive NBA rights to negotiate with and sign him for the period ending one year from the earlier of the following two dates. The date the player notifies the team that he's available to sign the contract immediately provided that such notice will be effective 
until the player is under will not be effective i should say until the player is under no contractual or other legal impediment to sign and play with that team for the then current season if applicable in any future season or the date of the nba draft occurring in the 12 month period from september 1 to august 30 in which the player notified the team of his availability and intention to play in the nba during the season immediately following um, that 12 month period, provided that um, the notice will not be effective until the players, again, under no contractual or other legal impediment to sign and play with that team. It will be the earlier of those two dates. If by July 1 of any year the player notifies a team that has drafted him, that by September 1 of that year he will be under no contractual or other legal impediment to sign and play then the team must make a required tender to the player by September 10 of that year. If a player gives the required notice by July 1 and the team that drafted him fails to make a required tender by September 10, the player will thereupon become a free a rookie free agent. If during the one-year period of exclusive NBA negotiating rights, um, the player signs a contract with the professional team not in the NBA, and the player has not made a bona fide effort to negotiate a contract with the team p- possessing his uh, NBA rights, or a bona fide effort is made and the team makes a required tender, then the team will retain the exclusive NBA rights for additional one year periods via Section 5A. If during the one year period of exclusive NBA negotiating rights, uh, the player signs a professional to a professional basketball team not in the NBA, has made a bona fide effort to negotiate with the team that has his rights, and the team fails to make a required tender, the player will become a rookie free agent. If during the one-year period of exclusive rights, the team makes or has made a required tender and the player doesn't sign a contract with the professional team, Um, any professional team, then in the case of a player who was previously drafted in an initial draft, the next NBA draft following the one-year period will be deemed a subsequent draft and the rules will be applicable of the subsequent draft to that player or a player who has previously drafted in the subsequent draft, the player will become a rookie free agent. Um, Notice under this section shall be provided in writing by personal delivery or prepaid certified registered or overnight mail. Section 6, application to, quote, early entry players. If a player who is eligible for the draft or, quote, early entry player is selected in that draft, uh, then the following rules apply. If the player doesn't thereafter play college ball, then the team that drafted him will be the only team he can negotiate or sign a contract with provided that the team makes a required tender to the player each year by the date specified in Section 4A. For the purposes of what was just said, the draft in which the player would, absent his becoming an early entry player, first have been eligible to be selected will be deemed a subsequent draft, and the rules will apply for subsequent draft to that player. If the player hasn't signed a player contract with the team that drafted him in the draft following the required tender, and is not drafted in the subsequent draft, he'll become a rookie free agent. If the player does play college basketball, then the team that drafted him, if he plays college ball after, uh, and the team that drafted him will retain his exclusive rights um, for the period ending one year from the date of the draft, provided that the team makes a required tender each year by the date specified in Section 4A. Um... The draft in which the player would, absent his becoming an early entry player, first have been eligible to be selected will be deemed the initial draft for this player. And then the next draft will be the subsequent draft, and then those rules will apply. Um, A non-NBA signing by an early entry player shall never shorten the period of time during which the player may negotiate and sign a contract only with the team that drafted him. Those are all early entry player rules. Section 7, Assignment of Draft Rights. In the event that the exclusive right to negotiate with the player obtained in any NBA draft is assigned by a team to another team uh, via the uh, NBA procedures, 
The team to which the right has been assigned will have the same but no greater right to negotiate and sign the player uh, the same way the player will have the same uh, but no greater obligation to the team. Section 8, General. The placement of a rookie on the armed services list or on any of the other lists described in the NBA bylaws or other lists created by the NBA will not extend the period of exclusive negotiating rights uh, in which a team has to a draft rookie beyond what's specified in the agreement. An early entry player who is eligible to be selected in the next NBA draft shall be entitled to withdraw from the draft by providing written notice that is received by the NBA 10 days prior to the draft. A player can't be entitled to withdraw from more, from more than two drafts or will not be entitled to withdraw from more than two drafts, I should say. Any claim by a player that a contract offered as a required tender fails to meet one or more criteria will be made by written notice to the to the team no later than 10 days after the receipt of the contract by the players association the team will within 5 business days offer the player or may offer the player within 5 days an amended contract incorporating the requested changes and the player and the players association will be precluded from asserting that the contract does not constitute a timely and valid required tender. Section 9, NBA, com- NBA Draft Combine. The parties shall work together to identify ways to secure full player participation in each year's draft combine for all invited players and also to improve the overall player experience. That concludes Articles 8 through 10, pages 265 to 281, covering rookie scale, length of player contracts, and player eligibility and NBA draft. Happy studying. See you at the top.